Hello and welcome to MidnightSilverCrafters.com. My name's Steve and I'll be your host. Today we're going to cast some pewter jewelry and we're going to make these beautiful vintage snake rings. It's hot. I mean, it's really All hot. All right. Well, today we're going to be talking about uh, casting some pewter. Okay. Uh, now, before I before I get into this, I, I just would like to say uh, for the new people, uh, if you're brand new, if this is your first time stopping by the channel, um, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about what I do and what I teach on this channel. Um, I do lost wax casting is what I do. I do jewelry casting and lost wax casting. And uh, also, I do silversmithing and I teach silversmithing. Uh, here's, here's some rings I've made just this last week. And uh, here's, a, here's a real nice pendant that I, I'm working on right here. But uh, that's, that's what I teach on this channel. I, I teach uh, casting, jewelry casting, and I teach silversmithing. So if, uh, if that's something that you know, you're interested in or if any of this sparks your interest, um, it would be great if you would subscribe to the channel. Um, I would really appreciate that. And uh, I would just like to say that if you do uh, decide that you want to subscribe to the channel, if you could, if you would just do me one great big favor, if, if you could just put down there in the, in the comment section, if you could just leave me a comment, and if you could just write, I subscribe, that would be awesome, and I would greatly appreciate that. So, uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to let uh, the new people know, uh, you know, what we're all about here on this channel and, and what we do. All right, so now let's go ahead and get right into this. Now, today we're going to be talking about casting some pewter. Now, most people, when they think about casting pewter, they think about sand casting. You know, using Delft clay or Petrobon or green sand or something like that. Well, the truth is, you can do pewter, you can cast pewter exactly the same way that you do silver, okay? And we're, we're talking about the lost wax method here. Now, what I got here, I got a tree right here that I made, okay? Now, the, the, these are just wax patterns that I made and I put on this tree. Now, I got a real good video on making trees. If you want to you learn how to make a tree, watch my, watch my video on that. But I just, I got some clay here. Now, you know, if... if if you know anything about this channel, you know that the main thing I do on this channel is I teach doing everything on the cheap. Okay, I don't use expensive equipment. I don't use expensive materials. I don't use anything that's expensive that I got to pay a lot of money for. I, I do this for a living and, you know, I, I, if I spend a lot of money on a lot of equipment and a lot of materials, I'll make less profit. So I have methods that I teach of doing everything on the cheap. Now, I don't use a regular rubber sprue base like most people do. I just use clay. Okay, now, this is just plain old modeling clay. You get it at Michael's. It's the cheap stuff. But we're just going to take this clay right here, and we're going we're gonna to just set this can down over here, and we're going to pour our investment. Now, we're not going to use plaster of Paris. We're not going to use plaster and sand and not, none of that stuff. We're going to use regular jewelry casting investment. If you want professional results, you have to use investment powder, okay? Regular ca jewelry casting investment powder. And it's not that cheap. You know, it's not super cheap, but... You know, if, and you make a mold like this, and you, you make your, uh, put your parts all on a tree, and if you cast 10 or 15 or 20 parts all at once, 
if the investment is not really that bad. You don't want to just cast one or two rings. Uh, it's going to be real expensive with the investment powder. But, you know, making a lot of parts is like this. It, it's not really that expensive. Now, I got some pewter here. All right, now I got on this scale, I got 127 grams of pewter. Okay, now I want to tell you why pewter is a good way to start out to learn in lost wax casting. Because pewter, for one thing, is dirt cheap. Now, that 127 grams of metal right there cost me less than probably about 50 cents. I went to the thrift store and I got an old couple old pieces of pewter that were all, you know, dented up and no good. And I, I melted them down and I got me some pewter. I got about 50 cents in that metal right there, 127 grams. But a, another reason that you, learning how to do this starting out with pewter, another good thing is you don't, it's easy to melt your metal, okay? You don't really need a furnace. To melt your metal. Now, I have a really good jewelry furnace that I designed specifically for casting jewelry that's made out of a mixing bowl. And you, you want to go watch that video because you can build that furnace for really cheap. For you can build that furnace for less than a hundred bucks, and you can cast any metal you want using that furnace. But we're talking about pewter today. But it, but. It's easy to melt. You can melt it on your stove. You can buy a little cheap pewter pot, okay? And it's not, you know, it's not much money. But all we're going to do, we're going to take this can, we're going to seat it down on this clay, and we're going to we're going to pour our investment. Now, this I'm not going to cover in this video. I'm not going to cover mixing and pouring investment. I have a good video on that already. So watch all my videos. I mean, there now you got some good reasons to subscribe to the channel because I got a lot of good videos covering all this stuff. Anything related to casting and lost wax casting, making trees and everything. I got good videos on that. So you want to subscribe to the channel. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pour this investment and then I'm going to come back when the mold is ready and then we're going to stick it in my homemade burnout oven, okay? Uh, I got a video on making a burnout oven too, but we're going to burn it out, okay? And in five hours, we're going to burn this wax out of this mold and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to cast this computer. So I'll be right back as soon as I get this mold invested and we'll go ahead and we'll melt down some pewter and we'll we'll cast this a mold. All right, so here we are. We're in the kitchen, and we're gonna stick this mold. We got our mold. All right, here's the mold. Uh, if you can if you can see that right there, right there's the wax. Okay, the wax is just uh, sticking right out of the, the sprue hole. Now, before you put this in the oven, you want to check this real good after you peel this clay off to make sure that there's there's nothing covering that uh, that wax because we want to make sure this wax is going to be able to drip out of there alright so now we're going to put this in the oven face down the, the sprue hole facing down and we got our oven set on 220 this is our kitchen oven it's not going to smoke so you don't have to worry about that you won't, you won't even know what's in there. There's no smoke. You got to keep it on 220. If you raise it up past 220, you're going to have a house full of smoke. Especially you go over, you go over uh, 250 to 300, and you're really going to have a house full of smoke. But keep it on 220. We're going to put it in here, and we're going to, we're going to let it stay in there for two hours. And then after two hours, we're going to take it out. And we're going to put it in our homemade burnout oven out in the shop. And we're going to let it set for five hours. So, all right. There you go. I'll be back in two hours. All right. So, we are back. It's been exactly two hours now. And here's the mold. I just I took it out of the oven and I brought it out here. There it is. You can see there's still some wax there. But basically, the wax is pretty much out of the mold. 
and I'm going to put it on here and I'm going to go ahead and put it down put my uh, homemade refractory pot over top of it now like I said uh, you can watch my video on how to make this burnout oven uh, it's really easy to make I mean you can make this burnout oven for about 50 bucks and it works great now we're gonna we're gonna leave it in here for five hours now if there's a little bit of wax if you when you get your mold out of your oven out of your kitchen oven or whatever oven you're going to use if there's a little bit of wax left if if those if that sprue hole still has wax in it that's fine don't worry about it just put it down in here now if there's a lot of wax in there it will drip and it will it'll come down and it'll actually catch on fire inside of here but it's not a problem it won't hurt a thing but wherever you put this burnout of it make sure you put it somewhere where it's not going to be uh, where the smoke is not going to be a problem don't put this in your house or anything because this will smoke okay you're going to get a little bit of smoke coming off of this but uh, it won't smoke very long it'll it'll just burn up and then it'll smoke a little bit but then it'll clear up but now we got it in there I'm gonna put my lid on which is just a piece of fire brick all right and then we're gonna leave that right in there it's sitting right down on that burner with the sprue hole facing down we're gonna leave it in there for five hours then we're going to come back and we're going to take it out and we're going to cast it. I'll be back in five hours. All right, we're back. It's been exactly five hours. The mold is ready to come out of the oven. What you're looking at right here is my casting table. Now I got a, I got a whole video on how to build this. It's a simple homemade casting table with a vacuum pump. So you, you want to go watch that video if you want to want to build you one of these. You can build that thing for about 30 bucks. A vacuum pump will cost you about 150 bucks. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to get the mold. I'm going to bring it over here. Uh, now, <clears throat> my furnace is makes a little bit of noise, and I'm using my furnace <clears throat> to heat the metal. So I apologize for the noise, but uh, <clears throat> for me, that's the easiest way to do it because that's how I, you know, I cast every day and I just use my furnace. I, I don't use a hot plate, but all right. So I'm going to go ahead and get the mold and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to get it casted. All right, we got our mold here now. Now you can see down in that, in that sprue hole that it's perfectly white and clear. All the wax, everything's gone. Now I'm going to sit this down on my vacuum table and I'm going to put the sprue facing up and I'm just going to set it down on this gasket and then I'm going to turn on my vacuum. Alright, now when you cast pewter, you've got to do this a little differently because when you cast silver, you got to cast it when your mold is right out of the oven when it's super, super, super hot. Now with pewter, it's a little bit different. You want this mold to cool down a little bit. See now, I've let it cool down a little bit. It's, it's still cooling off, okay? But um, you don't want to let it cool completely down all the way down because it could crack. You take it out of that oven and if it cools down too fast all the way it can start cracking on the inside where the investment's real thin. But I got it on here now all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead turn the vacuum pump on in here in a second and then I'm gonna get my metal out of my furnace, okay? And I'm gonna and I'm gonna pour this uh, pour this metal, this pewter into this mold. So uh, all right, we're gonna give it a shot here.
Alright, you can you can hear my furnace running there in the background, but I'm just gonna close this valve right here. I'm gonna turn on my vacuum pump and I'm gonna walk over there and I'm gonna get my metal and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour it in. And then after we cast this mold, we're gonna uh, we're gonna quench it down here in some water. So I'm gonna turn on the pump and go walk over there and get my metal and cast it. Now you always want to check it. Make sure that it's sealed real good on that. If it's not good on that vacuum, okay, you're going to have a problem. It's not, it's not going to solidify right away. Now, it, the colder your mold is, the quicker it will solidify. But the thing is, you want your mold... See, I can, I can just barely put my finger on it. You want your mold hot. You don't want to pour it when it's you know, room temperature mold. You don't want your mold to cool down that long because it could crack. But we're going to go ahead and as soon as this solidifies, we're going to go ahead and we're going to quench it down in some water. Alright, I'm hoping you can see that down in there okay. I'm going to, I believe it's probably just about right to uh, get this thing to quench it. Alright, now the, the trick is getting it, getting it cooled down to the right stage to where you can quench it. Okay, so let me see what we got here. All right, I believe she's ready. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it down in this water. And cool it off. All right, now, you see it's not it's not steaming or smoking or anything because it's a little bit different. Okay, <laughs> you got you got to do this a little bit different. See now it's 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 just about solidified there. It's cooling off now. I'm gonna give it. I'm just gonna give it a little bit longer, and then I'm gonna <coughs> put it down in the water. Now, when you do pewter, <coughs> it's a little bit harder to get your, uh, <coughs> your part out of your investment because when, when you pour silver, silver immediately solidifies. Pewter does not, especially in a bigger mold like that because it's a big insulator and it keeps the metal hot. Okay, so... It may be just a little bit, a little bit harder to get to get your uh, to get your part out of the investment. 
but we'll we'll uh, we'll see how we go with it. All right, I'm just gonna cool this down a little bit. All right, now I'm just gonna put her down in the water. Now, now we're probably gonna have to dig out the piece because that investment is not dissolving away from our from our casting. Now, now normally when you cast silver, you put that down in there and that is just gonna completely dissolve and your, your casting will be sitting left on the bottom. Well, this doesn't do that. So <clears throat> you gotta do a little, little more getting your, uh, getting your pieces out of there. So I'm gonna have to do a little more work here getting it out, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, <clears throat> get this out of, the, uh, um, out of the investment, and then we're gonna take a look at the finished casting. All right, well, I, I got them out of there. I had to do a little bit of digging, but uh, they're laying up there on, on top of the vacuum, uh, my vacuum table there, but uh, it, they, they look rough right now, but uh, <clears throat> I, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean them up, and uh, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna set some stones in those rings and I'll clean them up and I'll, I'll get them finished up and I'll show you, I'll show you the finished product. And uh, you won't believe the detail uh, on, on those, uh, those little small parts. You just, the detail's amazing. I'll, I'll give you some close up shots of it. Okay, here they are. I uh, got them buffed out a little bit and uh, real easy to buff these small parts. There's just nothing to it. And, uh, Put a nice piece of spider web turquoise on this ring here, and uh, I think on the other rings I'm going to put some turquoise and some uh, spiny oyster shell. But uh, okay, I think I'm going to wrap it up for this video. Um, I, I'm going to put another video up on uh, some more tips and, and secrets about pewter. So uh, look for that uh, video. I'm going to put I'm going to put another video up here soon. I'll give you a little more information on uh, casting pewter. I do hope you subscribe. I would love to have you as a part of the channel. So my name's Steve, and I'll talk to you in the next video.